I'm Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. I'm talking about the NHS today. So you can like, subscribe, share. Yeah, the free parking um, on the 27th of December. I saw an article about free parking at the, at the hospitals. And I thought, great, free parking. Because remember the other day I did do a video. I was with a friend. We went down to the hospital and um, I had to park about just under a mile and walk to the hospital. Well, actually, I dropped him off because he couldn't walk. And then I drove the car to the parking space and then I had to walk back. It took me nearly 15, 20 minutes. So I thought, great, you know, free parking. But the parking is not much different. I mean, OK, Luton and Dunstable Hospital. They actually have um, parking bays for disabled people outside the hospital. I don't know if they have to pay, but um, they have got designated spots. So what is the free parking that they are offering now? Well, let me tell you. Bit after these big headlines. Thousands more NHS patients and visitors will be able to access free hospital car parking, the government says. From April 2020, all 206 hospital trusts in England will be expected to begin offering the concession in line with the government's manifesto promise. You see how they word it? With those greatest in need will benefit. Not those who can hardly walk to the hospital though, or the people who have to escort them there. There's nothing for anybody who has to go to the A&E and who is in dire need. I guess what they'll have to say is that you'll have to go by ambulance. And then when you go by ambulance, I'm not sure if somebody can go with you in the ambulance. I think you have to follow the ambulance. Anyway, that includes groups such as people with disabilities and NHS staff working night shifts. Big deal. Currently, hourly charges at hospitals for parking vary between £1 and £4. I'd like to know where it is for £1. Probably out in the stick somewhere. It is up to the trust to make their own car parking arrangements. NHS hospital car parking fees were abolished in Scotland and Wales in 2008, although a small number of hospitals in Scotland still charge as they remain tied into contracts with private companies that manage their parking facilities. Fees may be charged in Northern Ireland, and it's even worse when they hand over the parking to these private companies because these private companies just rip you off and there's no flexibility with them. All they do, they rely on the silly camera and I mean, once you go in, you could have gone in, made a mistake, want to leave and they're still going to register you and charge you for going in. Anyway, who will get free parking? Blue badge holders, those are the disabled. They should get free parking. Frequent outpatients who have to attend regular appointments to manage long-term conditions. So I'm assuming those are people with like maybe terminal conditions or, I don't know, maybe sickle cell. You know, I don't know how they define manage long-term conditions. I don't know how that's defined. And, you know, regular. It's very obscure, isn't it? Frequent outpatients. What do they do? What do they call frequent? We might think frequent is going every six weeks or every or twice a month or every three months. But for them, frequent might be every day or every other day. And so if it's not that frequent, you might not even get a slot. So it's not very, it's a bit vague. Free parking will also be offered at specific times of the day to certain groups including parents of sick children staying in hospital overnight. I think that is fair. But there again, normally you get free parking overnight anyway, after six o'clock. Well, you do in Bedfordshire. And staff working night shifts, and that should be a given. So, they're not, what are they really offering? Free parking will be offered at specific times of the day to certain groups. 
I mean, really and truly, why can't they say what those groups are and what the Pacific times are? To see as we, the public, feel as though it's useful. You know, it's so vague. So I'm not too thrilled with this. The government says the change will make the NHS as accessible as possible for those who need it most and have little choice but to travel by car without congesting car parks. But it's not clear how many people will directly benefit. Many hospitals that already offer concessions, free or reduced charges or caps, for visitors that would fall into the greatest need category as per existing guidelines. The guidelines already also recommend that any charges are reasonable for the area to keep fees in check while deterring people such as commuters who do not have legitimate reasons for parking. The government says many hospitals have ignored the guidance issued in 2015 and are charging the protected groups. I used to work in a hospital and um, employees don't get no parking. I mean, you can, you go on a waiting list and you can get these coins, you, you know, after you've been on a waiting list, you can get these coins that do, does give you parking. But the parking is not that close. It was still like... A 15 minute walk. So I just used to park around some of the flats and the people around the flats, they get so, they get so, um, the owners of homes, homes around there, they must get frustrated having cars outside their homes. So it's not very good. I think that especially big hospitals, they should have their own massive park, car park and it should have concessionary parking for visitors. If you're a visitor, you pay a pound or something for a couple of hours and that would cover. And then if it is like A&E, like when I went with my friend, we were there. Well, he was there. I went back home. But say I was there from four o'clock till nine o'clock. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's five hours. Now, suppose I had to, suppose I was there from 1230 from when he went in. I mean, what concession is there for that? There isn't any if I had to pay for parking. At him, as a patient, he would get a concession for parking if he could if he could drive. But normally, if you're going to the A&E, you're not going to be able to drive, are you? So I don't understand how who this benefits, to be honest. Um, the government says many hospitals have ignored the guidance issued in 2015 and are charging the protected groups. About 15% of NHS sites currently charge for disabled parking, according to NHS figures published in October 2019. For example, Royal Surrey County Hospital in Guildford charges blue badge holders £4 a day for parking while Pinderfields, Pontefract and Dewsbury and districts in hospitals in Yorkshire charge up to £2.80 a day for blue badge holders. I think there should be some kind of consistency across the board for hospitals. £4 in one place and £2.80 in another. But there again, Yorkshire is, is miles away. I don't know where Pinderfields is. Pontefract, I think they're quite far. Anyway, um, last year, hospital trusts in England made more than 254 million from car parking charges and a further 1.5 million from parking fines, according to the data from Freedom of Information requests. That is absolutely ridiculous. So it's a money making thing as usual. The Conservative Party has said 78 million per year will be provided which it says is new funding for entire for extra parking capacity or compensation for loss of fees. But the fact of the matter is 78 million and they're already making 254 million. What's the 78 million for? I don't get it. Is that for the little few few um, offerings that they're making for people who don't really need it who are staying overnight, night staff and parents who are sleeping with their children? They don't have to pay at night anyway. 
So I don't understand what they are actually offering that's going to benefit anyone. I really think that people who go to A&E are not talking about people with colds and stuff, but people who can hardly walk and who have to be escorted. I think that they should get free parking or concessionary parking. You know, you know, they know how long they keep you in there. So if it's for five hours, they charge you a pound or one pound fifty for five hours. That's what they should be doing. That is what would help people. Providing you're registered in A&E and you've got an absolute physical um, disability that they can actually see that you can't walk and you need help and you need an escort or somebody to drive you. There should be some concessionary parking for that. That's what I believe. That is what I think is people in desperate need and who and who it would help. I mean, people who can walk up and down, I don't think they should get concessionary, but I think they should be able to use their discretion. A patient's association says hospital parking should be free, calling the fees a charge on people who are unwell. Very, very true. The British Parking Association supports concessions for vulnerable groups, but does not believe that all hospital car parking should be free. I don't think it should be free. I think a concession, the amount of people that they go in there. I mean, the other day it was like a bloody, um, ah, oh, it was like an underground in a rush hour. Honestly, couldn't even hardly move. Kind of shuffling through the amount of people that were in there. They'd make a killing. Even if they charge each person £1.50. I believe appointments should get free parking. The waiting is so lengthy. Oh, that's my little bit. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? NHS providers, which represents health managers, has also defended parking charges, saying fees can be used to ensure parking facilities are maintained, lit well and secure. With any surplus, we invested back into wider services for patients. Health Secretary Matt Hancock said, we are today delivering on our manifesto commitment and setting out our new approach to NHS hospital parking charges. Oh, they don't really care, do they? It's just money, money, money. And then if it does get privatised, can you imagine how much the parking will be then? Oh dear, what can we do? We're at their mercy. So... They say that we, they, they, they're delivering on their manifesto's promise. But I don't see what they're offering now that they weren't offering before. Only that it's in writing. So that's it. Bye-bye.